And today, I have someone special joining me, my husband, Anthony. Whoever thought making a baby could be so hard? Luckily, the fertility journey isn't meant to be traveled alone. Eloise Drain has helped hundreds of people build and grow their families over the last 15 years. And she's ready to share her insider knowledge and expertise with you. So grab a seat and let's talk fertility and alternative family building in the Fertility Cafe. Welcome to Fertility Cafe. I'm Eloise Drain. And today I have someone special joining me, my husband, Anthony. Say hi, babe. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> to the podcast world, I guess. So I had to literally convince him to just please come on here for a few minutes. So I can only ask him a couple of questions. So I'm going to get right to it and not waste any of his time. So as you know, I had mentioned previously that I had been a three-time surrogate. And when I first brought it to my husband, well, actually, to be truthful, when I brought it to him every single time, there was definitely hesitation. And the very first time that I brought him the idea that I wanted to be a surrogate, not only did we not agree, we got into a very large disagreement. And uh, to the point where... <laughs> dicey, dicey, dicey. <laughs> We're just going to be real on the show today, okay? And if you hear it, it's because I actually decided that I was just going to go ahead and play it. And if you don't, this is just a, a real conversation between him and I. So I kept asking him about being a surrogate. And like I had said in a previous podcast, I knew that surrogacy for me was my calling. I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Just like I knew about me being a kidney donor to my cousin, because even when I had told my family that I wanted to be his, you know, that we were a match and I wanted to be his kidney donor, everybody was like, well, you know, it's wonderful. It's great. And they were happy and they were excited that I wanted to do it. But there were people that were nervous. I mean, people were scared and, you know, you're putting your life in danger. You're putting your children's lives in danger. What about if you pass away? I mean, I saw so many psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists and counselors, you know, at 23 years old, why in the world would I want to be a kidney donor? It was the same exact feeling that I had then that I had about being a surrogate. But how do you really explain that to somebody who's, you know, I mean, this is foreign to him. And when I was a kidney donor for my cousin, my husband and I were not together. So he didn't experience that with me before. So when I kept insisting <laughs> that I wanted to uh, be a surrogate, we were literally in a car and arguing in the car and he was like, pull over. I pulled over and he got out the car. He was that upset. He was like pissed off. So was I. So he started walking and I took off and went home and left him <laughs> and <laughs> then called his cousin and told him to go and pick up his stubborn behind because he didn't even have his phone on him. He had nothing on him. He just literally like just got out the car. So I'm going to let him tell his side of the story. And just like he didn't disrupt me at all, I'm going to let him kind of share his side. Okay, babe, your turn. <laughs> all right. First of all, you know, I should have filed abandonment <laughs> charges against <laughs> you for leaving me out there on the side of the room. All right, I'm going to do this once and one time only because this is something that I just, I don't get involved in. But my side of everything, looking back at it now, I can honestly say that there was a lot of ignorance on my part. And that ignorance being ignorant to surrogacy in general, ignorant to the process, the procedures, everything that involved in it. Because like she said, when she first bought this to me, I, I, I was just wondering why. and you know, I thought at first, like, why would you want to do that? And I didn't understand what it entailed. Like, does this mean I have to, like, kind of lend my wife out to a, another guy, you know, to go and uh, <laughs> conceive a child or something? So I didn't know that part about it. Uh, I didn't understand compensation, you know, monetary compensation. And I felt, well, we don't need the money. I mean, why would you do this? And, you know, so there was that explanation that had to be given to me. And above all, as I learned and understood more about the process, then became the safety. And I truly was concerned, like, I don't want anything to happen to my wife, especially 
you know, not something that I didn't cause, you know, so I was kind of scared about that. You know, what's going to happen if something happens to my wife or there are some medical issues that occur or, you know, possibly death. I mean, you hear about women, you know, passing away from labor and things like that. So it was, there was still a lot of adjustment for me. And, and even seeing that some of the uh, difficulties that she had um, during our own children, you know, being born. So I was, I was very well concerned about that. And after a lot of counseling, not just from her, but even, you know, speaking to some of my friends and who obviously had no kind of idea of what the entire surrogacy journey was like and, you know, really just putting things in perspective for me, which I actually learned a lot about my friends who, trust me, this is not their <laughs> industry. This is not their lane. But some of the things that they've explained to me, and one of those being the importance of standing behind, you know, your partner, your spouse, and kind of supporting their endeavors and, and their visions and, and just different things that they want to do and not being that person that kind of says, hey, no, you cannot do this or I'm not going to allow that or what have you. So once I, once I had those type of conversations, I decided to just get as educated as possible through her, uh, through other folks that she knew within the industry and just understand. And, you know, even when we had our meetings or, or the psyche that, yes, the evaluations, um, with, uh, intended parents and things like that. And, and just understanding how blessed we were, whereas so many folks out there who want to have families and we were blessed with five of these little critters mm -hmm. uh, running around and really seeing the, the, the joy in their hearts and, you know, as they told their stories about what they weren't able to do that we kind of took for granted because I would have gladly like gave them, you know, one and a half of ours. <laughs> but um, so, so just that, and, and, and that's really my take on it. It was, it was more so once I was educated enough to understand and then being able to put aside my selfish pride, my, my, you know, other selfish points that I had and really rally behind of supporting my wife and what she wanted to do and kind of make it something a, as a family we can do and, and kind of move forward. So that's it. That's all I have. Well, thank, well, <laughs> no, you said I could ask up to five questions. So that was only question number one. Okay. The other thing that I actually, oh, just real quick, just to clarify, as far as like men's difficulty in pregnancies and women difficulties in pregnancy. So luckily, and thank God for my own pregnancies, I didn't really have any difficulties. I had pregnancy pain and pregnancy weight. And he still actually 14 years later still has pregnancy weight, but I love him to death anyway. So, but. I just wanted to make sure that, unfortunately, when it comes to pregnancies, you, there's going to be difficulties. And the difficulties doesn't have to be anything major, but you're carrying around another human being. Your body is going to hurt. Your body is going through transformations and, and all other kinds of things that only you know what your body is enduring. So for me, what might be painful for the next person may not be painful. But that's my body, and I can only speak for my own. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay, but I wanted to just touch on a second point that I feel like in our family anyway was another hurdle, if you will. And I don't, and I don't even know if it was for my husband, but I know it was for me. And even to this day, sometimes even as an agency owner, it is for me. And unfortunately, it is the conversation of race. And us being a black family, it is not common whatsoever for black women to be surrogates. It's just not. It's not something that our families are for. Heck, not just our family. Sometimes we have all the family support and it's intended parents because of the color of our skin that don't want to work with us. And sometimes it doesn't matter the color of person's skin. I can tell you black, white, green, purple, whatever. We all have our own issues. We all have our own quirks. We all have our own things or, or, or experiences in our lives that have shaped us. 
So when I decided that I wanted to be a surrogate, I had to take into consideration the fact that I was a black woman. And number one, would any intended parents want to work with me? Perhaps maybe a black family. However, it is very difficult to come up with the money to pay for surrogacy. It's not, it's not a cheap endeavor by any stretch of the imagination. And unfortunately for a lot of minority families, they are financially unable to, to find a surrogate to work with them. And if they, you know, if they try, it's, it's difficult. And that's why you see more families of different races having children via surrogacy than you do black. So of course that was a consideration for me. And I was like, okay, really the hurdle for me was what is my family going to say? I mean, I finally got my husband's support and that was obviously the first and foremost. Then we told our kids and my kids were, I mean, my oldest son at the time, he was what, 12, 13? So, or maybe even 14. So I, you know, we had older children and then we had our youngest. My youngest, gosh, when I first did my surrogacy journey, he was two, three and he really didn't understand. His whole thing was I was pregnant with twins and he would want to sit next to me. And, you know, he was mommy's boy. So he would sit next to me and put his head on my chest and he used to like to feel skin. So that was his comfortable place. Well, the bigger my stomach got, the more he was just like, oh, no, th no, this needs to move. He, this needs this needs to go away. And I always had to assure him you know, these babies aren't coming here. They're going to somebody else's house. So he wanted to make sure he remained the baby. So <laughs> and he's definitely going to be the baby. So anyway, I was just like, okay, if I can get my husband on board and I can get my children on board, I need to get my parents on board. And when I first went to my mom, Lord, that woman, she was my mom is Catholic and was dead set against it. And just like I had to educate my husband, I had to educate my mom. And I had to kind of explain it to her so she, she could also understand that for me, it was the same thing that I did for Franny, my cousin. So she then finally got around. And when I got the most important people's support, then it was like, okay, it's a go. And, you know, whatever happens from here, it's out of my control. But so so I don't run out of my time. I'm going to <laughs> turn over to Anthony again to get his perspective. And then I have one last question and then we're done. I didn't hear your question. What was your thoughts on us doing the surrogacy, you know, given that we were a black family and how that may affect everything? So so for me. Race wasn't a factor as far as the willingness to, you know, su you know, let, give you the support and, and doing it. It was more a factor of perception to the intended parents. Obviously, the couple is looking to get something from you that they so dearly wanted. And, you know, my first perception was, how are they viewing you? Are they viewing you as just merely a vessel to get to what they want done and, and then that's it or you know the the discussions and the meetings that we had with them was it genuine all of the things that they were saying and and that they felt and how joyous they were and i think to a to a certain aspect they were you know it was genuine for what they were you know the gift that they were going to receive however i guess i looked more at it as not that we're going to become lifelong friends or anything like that, but just that they're not looking at us, you know, taking it for granted, you know, like, okay, I just need these people to be here to do what I need to do. And, and then that's it, which is all well and good because that's the, that's the deal. You know, you're, you're going to be a surrogate. Everything goes great. They have a beautiful child, uh, two in this case. And, you know, we wish them the best of luck and they can move on. But I had to mature myself to understand that that's what it was and not that we were going to be lifelong friends, but we're both, both parties were going to be amicable to each other and 
you know, cordial and things like that. And, and we kind of support each other throughout the process. So I guess that's my, my biggest thing. And, you know, by the couple being a couple of, of, you know, not a minority couple, a Caucasian couple, they were a Caucasian couple. I mean, I didn't really, it didn't bother me at all to that, you know, to that aspect of, you know, what race they were. I just wanted to make sure that there was mutual respect between um, both parties. That's all. Now, but my second couple was a Caribbean couple, or sorry, a couple from the Caribbean. And, and then, of course, my third couple was a, also a Caucasian couple. And was there, was there any time you regretted um, saying, okay, it's okay, you can do this? Well, you know how I feel about regrets. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, it's kind of like, there's no sense in regretting anything. I look at everything as a learning experience, whether it's a, uh, whether there was a bad outcome or a positive outcome, it's still a learning experience. So does it mean that if I had a bad experience in something, am I going to go on life feeling as I regret doing it? No, I'm not going to feel that I regret doing it. I'm just going to say that if I have to do something similar to that again, at least I'm armed with the knowledge of the previous experience so that I can now hopefully navigate to a more positive outcome as I go on. Doesn't mean I'm going to make the same mistake twice, but I'm not going to sit back and soak and regret in it. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have any regrets per se, because personally, I, I think that going through the entire journeys with you, mm -hmm. there was nothing wrong with us as far as, you know, I love you and you love me, but I think it allowed us both to walk a specific journey that through its, you know, ebbs and flows and its mm -hmm. valleys and, you know, highs and everything, we've learned a lot about ourselves and a lot about each other together. And it kind of made us mature, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just continue through life. You know, mm -hmm. So, so I don't have any regrets about it. And uh, either, either any of the couples, you know, they all were unique in their own way and we all had um, unique relationships with mm -hmm. each other. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's it. No I'm, more questions. I'm good. All You're right. good. You're I'm, free. So just wanted to say thank you. So long, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. And um, I'm sure that my husband will never do this again. So no follow-up questions because the answer is probably going to be no. And until next time, remember, love has no limits. Neither should parenthood. Thank you for joining us in the Fertility Cafe. Whether you're an intended parent, a woman considering egg donation, thinking of becoming a surrogate yourself, or a friend or family member of someone dealing with infertility, we're here to help. Visit our website, thefertilitycafe.com, for resources on fertility, alternative family building, and making this journey your own.